What is the clawback feature and what amendments are they currently making on the XRP ledger? We will be covering this and more also, including, the battle on the pressure of Bitcoin price between $27,000 and $28,000. Endeavor to stay till the end of the video as I will be giving you a detailed analysis of what an Ethereum virtual machine, EVM, is and how it works. If this sounds like something of much interest to you, be sure to check out this new video starting now. Hello and welcome to our channel, where we talk about the latest updates from the world of cryptocurrencies in general. If this is your first time watching one of our videos, we extend a special welcome to you. We invite you to hit the notification bell so you never miss another video. Now, let's dive in. Ripple's chief technology officer, CTO, David Schwartz, has always been quick to come to the defense of the crypto firm and its technology. This time, he has defended Ripple developers implementing a newly proposed clawback feature on the XRP ledger, XRPL. In a tweet shared on his X, formerly Twitter, platform, Schwartz mentioned that while initially having reservations about the feature as he felt it was redundant, he later realized its importance as it differed from the existing freeze feature. As the name suggests, the clawback feature allows a token issuer to claw back tokens when there is fraudulent activity or for recovery purposes, like when a user loses access to their account. He noted that the clawback feature was primarily to be used to fulfill legal obligations. As in the case of a stablecoin issue fulfilling their redemption obligations or where a court order necessitates the need to use such a feature. From this premise, he explained that this feature ensures that this event is represented on the ledger, unlike the freeze feature, which doesn't highlight why an asset was frozen. As such, this latest feature allows for better accountability and makes audits less complex. Furthermore, he mentioned that the freeze feature was more of a nuclear option, unlike the clawback feature, which does less damage and can seen as a viable and probably better alternative. Schwartz reiterated that this clawback didn't apply to XRP and suggested that it was an option for stablecoin issuers, noting that other blockchains that have stablecoins on them have some version of this clawback feature, and how it helped solve an accountability problem. Despite Schwartz's justification of the feature, many still showed displeasure with it as it undermined the ethos of decentralization and users' privacy. One ex-user, at BigCut, explained that a clawback feature seemed more drastic, unlike the freeze feature, as the former stripped users of their tokens, unlike the latter, where the user still maintained control of his tokens. He went on to quiz whether this token was simply proposed because of the recent partnership, considering that the feature was never proposed before now. He then suggested that the crypto firm and its blockchain may have been compromised as he stated, money taints, even decentralized ledgers. In response, Schwartz stated that, to the best of his knowledge, the driving force behind this feature was to ensure accountability as it would reflect the legal obligation of an issuer. He is not aware of anyone stating that they will only partner with Ripple if the XRPL supports clawback. Other users weighed in on the conversation, with some showing support for the feature, stating that stablecoin issuers needed to implement such a feature. On the other hand, others argued that the clawback feature wasn't necessary, with a particular user stating that this risk is akin to being SIM swapped. Another concern raised is that token issuers could use this feature maliciously, especially when experiencing financial difficulties. That particular user gave an example of FTX being able to claw back their FTT tokens or a stablecoin issuer like Tether clawing back their USDT tokens in the event of financial difficulty. The ex-user Big CJAT once again came into the conversation and noted that Schwartz's talks about legal obligation only undermine the essence of blockchain technology as there was no need for a ledger if the actual value and rules were off the ledger. However, Schwartz noted several benefits to putting these transactions on the ledger. One of them is that a public blockchain ensures that the total legal obligations of the issuer can be completely public in a verifiable way. The clawback feature will still need to be voted on by validators on the XRP ledger before it becomes implemented. Once implemented, stablecoin issuers must decide to enable it before they can create their tokens on the network. Furthermore, Bitcoin eased volatility into October 6 as BTC price downside preparations returned. Data from Cointelegraph Markets Pro and TradingView covered a flatter 24 hours for BTC, USD after a failed retest of $28,000. After lingering in a narrow range around 1.5% lower, the largest cryptocurrency was again pushing toward the $28,000 mark ahead of the Wall Street Open, yet fielded fresh concerns from market participants over potential losses to come. 
popular trader Don Crypto trades eyed an ongoing tussle between two key moving averages, MOS, on one-day timeframes. Whether the daily 200 MA, purple, or the daily 200 EMA, blue, gives in first, will likely determine the trend for the rest of October if I had to guess, he wrote alongside this chart, insert image, in an X post on October 4th. Don Crypto trades subsequently flagged increasing open interest, OI, across exchanges, this apt to cause a squeeze of shorts followed by longs, respectively. This has usually been a short squeeze, up, into long squeeze, back down. We saw this yesterday again. Good to keep an eye on this region, he suggested. Data from monitoring resource CoinGlass showed negligible liquidations across both long and short BTC positions through October 6. Monitoring resource material indicators meanwhile turned its attention to whale trading behavior over the course of the week. Dividing whales into volume-based cohorts, it showed different classes of whales making contradictory moves. Orders worth between $100,000 and $1 million, the class material indicators often says is the main driver of spot price action, have increased exposure, but failed to spark a broader uptrend. This week, Purple bought aggressively and sold the local top. They then stared buying dips for a net plus $13.8 million in market orders on Binance over the last seven days, it explained. Data further showed other whales net selling to the tune of nearly $60 million over the same period. We could speculate whether or not that's part of the FTX liquidation, material indicators added, referencing the potential liquidation of assets from defunct exchange FTX. Doesn't really matter who it is, but if there is any surprise, it's not that price hasn't gone higher it's that it didn't go lower. On the topic of exchange-based setups, popular trading account ExitPump likewise spied a potential liquidity grab being prepared below $27,400. Price always likes to do multiple kisses into resistance block forming a top, part of recent analysis summarized. Now to our main focus for the day. What is an Ethereum virtual machine, EVM, and how does it work? Please, do not forget to subscribe to our channel and also hit that notification bell to be the first person to get more updates about the latest happenings in the crypto space. The Ethereum Virtual Machine EVM, is a special state machine designed for the decentralized world of Ethereum, providing a runtime environment for executing smart contracts and decentralized applications. It operates across a network of computers and uses a transition function to process valid transactions. The EVM's consistency in delivering consistent results instills trust and ensures the execution of digital agreements without interference. The open source community around the EVM has created various tools and frameworks, enhancing the ecosystem and facilitating the development of EVM-compatible blockchains and DAPPs. The Ethereum Virtual Machine EVM, is a low-level programming language that operates on a stack-based architecture, executing smart contracts through opcodes. These contracts, written in languages like Solidity and Viper, are translated into bytecodes for the EVM to execute. Gas, a unit that quantifies computational costs and transaction fees, is crucial in the EVM. The EVM's execution of smart contracts ensures secure and trustless asset transfers, including ERC-20 tokens and NFTs, and guarantees deterministic contract execution free from centralized interference. The Ethereum Virtual Machine EVM, is the core of the Ethereum ecosystem, providing a Turing-complete system for smart contract execution and decentralized applications development. Its use cases include decentralized finance, supply chain management, identity verification, and personal data storage. EVM-compatible blockchains, such as Binance Smart Chain, Avalanche, Cardano, Solana, Polygon, Phantom, Optimism, Boba Network, and Heco, offer faster transaction speeds, reduced costs, and features tailored to diverse requirements. However, EVM has limitations such as scalability, high gas fees, and lack of decentralization. The Ethereum Virtual Machine EVM, faces challenges such as scalability, high costs, and technical demands. The Ethereum community is working to overcome these issues through upgrades like the Ethereum Optimism Full Compatibility EOF, upgrade, which aims to improve execution efficiency and upgradability. Additionally, the transition to Ethereum WebAssembly EWASM, aims to improve network speed and throughput, attracting more developers to Ethereum. Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments section. Write us anything down here, we are very eager to read you. Always remember that you are an important part of our community. 
With that we come to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, give the video a like and don't forget to subscribe. This really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Also share this video to as many people as possible, let's get this news everywhere. If you are a true cryptocurrency fan, don't miss any of our content and don't forget to follow us on our new Instagram account at FactMakeMoney. See you in a future opportunity to talk about the latest news that concerns us all as a community. Thanks for watching.